Hello friends, in the last few video, videos I have discussed about disinfection topic and I have uploaded total 6 video lectures on this topic only. Now in the module 4, uh, there is one more uh, small topic here, fluoridation and defluoridation. So let us complete this today and then take the remaining portion of the module 4. Now let us understand what is meant by fluoridation and defluoridation. Now, many times when we go in villages, we may get to see small children with stained teeth and uh, many times we wonder that what is this tobacco-like stain at a young age and then we many times see adults in their mid-40s and 50s with bent shoulders and legs complaining of extreme pain and being bedridden for years. So what is the problem with this, the, the young children having stained teeth and the adults 40 to 50 year old having severe pain, bent shoulders and legs right and then there is one more question here why the toothpaste companies add fluoride in the toothpaste. So next time tomorrow morning when you take out your uh, toothpaste for brushing you just read the contents there the, you will always see fluoride so many milligrams per liter it is written there so they add fluoride in the toothpaste and we also hear of a disease called as fluorosis in India which is caused by high fluoride so what is this high fluoride and what is fluorosis and why young children and adults they are having these problems which I mentioned and why the toothpaste is adding fluoride now the discovery of high consumption of fluoride is harmful for humans and animals and this was discovered in India in the year 1937 and since then there has been a long history of observation of fluorosis in many parts of India and across the world and fluorosis mainly occurs due to high consumption of fluoride from water. Right? Now, when we first hear about this problem of flora, flora, fluorosis and fluoride, it seems quite strange to us because the water which is containing or suspected to contain high fluoride looks very good without any taste or any objectionable odor, but it is considered as harmful to drink that water because it is having fluoride content more than 1.5 mg per liter. So, unless a chemical analysis of the water is done in a reputed laboratory you will not come to know that the water is having a high fluoride content beyond the permissible limit because it is not going to give any indication in the form of bad taste or bitter taste or any bad odor so it just looks like a good quality water but still the fluoride will be there in the water right now fluorine is naturally introduced into the environment in both water and air it is a natural thing and as a result chlorine is present in small but varying amounts in almost all soils, water supplies, plants and animals, right. It is a normal constituent of our diet also. Now this fluoride which is naturally occurring in water can be within the limit or it can be above the limit or it can be below the limit. So varying amount of fluoride may be found in the water. And the amount of fluoride which is present in the water again depends upon the geological formation in that area where the bore water is there, where the groundwater is there. So if there are fluoride rich rocks in that area, you will get water rich in fluoride. Now rivers and lakes generally contain fluoride levels less than 0.5 mg per liter, but groundwater particularly in volcanic or mountainous areas, they can contain even as high as 50 mg per liter of fluoride also. Higher concentration of fluoride are found in the sedimentary and other rocks and this fluorine easily dissolves into the nearby water as fluoride. So that is the reason why groundwaters they can have any amount of fluoride in it. In the human body, the highest concentration of fluoride is found in our bones and teeth. There are two main types of uh, the diseases which are caused by high fluoride content. 
so there are two main types of fluoruses dental fluoruses and skeletal fluoruses dental fluoruses is caused by continuous exposure to high concentration of fluoride during the development of the teeth right when the child is young when during the development stage itself if the child is consuming fluoride rich water then he will get dental fluoruses now this leads to enamel with low mineral content and increased porosity so because of the increased porosity the teeth is going to become brittle also the critical period for risk to dental fluoruses is between 1 to 4 years of age that is the period developing stage of the child that is a very critical period for developing dental fluoruses and after the age of 8 when the permanent teeth have established there is less risk now skeletal fluoruses is developed by disturbance of calcium metabolism in the formation of bones of the body now it results in softening and weakening of the bones resulting in deformities and then leading to crippling it can also aggravate calcium related disorders such as rickets in children and osteoporosis mainly in adults so osteoporosis is reduction in the bone density and because of which the bones are going to become brittle and they are prone to fracture for people who are exposed to high fluoride levels for many years that is levels for many decades severe cases of crippling can a crippling can occur now these are some of the photographs which i have collected from the internet showing the de uh, dental and skeletal fluoruses this is a picture of uh dental fluoruses and the second picture is uh, an x-ray film of skeletal fluoruses and the next two photographs are showing children having skeletal fluoruses of the legs so like this you have got many uh, photographs and many interesting things about the fluoruses in the internet if you are interested you can find right in the google search now again coming back to our earlier questions let us understand that fluoride is a very in a very small amount like what we get from toothpaste it cannot lead to any kind of skeletal fluoruses what we see in india today no small concentration of fluoride is not going to have any problem a daily intake of around 10 to 20 mg per liter for adults and a 3 to 4 mg per liter for children this is found to be harmful right if a person is consuming more than 10 to 20 mg per liter a child is consuming more than 3 to 8 mg per liter of fluoride then it is found to be harmful now using these limits the water safety limits of 1 mg per liter and 1.5 mg per liter has been arrived at in the context of india so in india we have set this limit that the water should have a fluoride content 1 to 1.5 mg per liter only in 20 states of india more than 100 districts across the country and probably more than 60 million people are consuming drinking water which has fluoride greater than 1 mg per liter now local food which is grown in that area is also getting irrigated by the same fluoride rich water so food also will contain more amount of fluoride in these places so this is going to make the total daily consumption of fluoride more than 10 mg per liter which is always harmful for adults and more so for children so the total consumption will exceed more than 10 because you are drinking fluoride rich water you are drinking fluoride rich food also right now now let's see what is uh, fluoridation now whatever we have discussed uh, earlier that is about the high fluoride content and its effect on the human body right now here fluoridation why it is required now fluoride as you know is especially important to young children and uh, it strengthens the child's tooth enamel even before the tooth breaks through the gums the hard surface of the tooth enamel is what is going to register the tooth decay 
it strengthens the tooth enamel and make it easier for a child to register the tooth decay now if you find lot of children in a particular area complaining about tooth decay then it is due to fluoride deficiency now earlier what we have discussed is high quantity of fluoride causing dental fluorosis and skeletal fluorosis and this is what we are uh, uh, talking here is deficiency because of fluoride so fluoride deficiency can also lead to tooth decay so if you add fluoride a small quantity of fluoride in the water you can prevent tooth decay in the children right now fluoridation is nothing but adding fluoride in the water to improve the quality of the water or to fortify the water with some essential micronutrient which is fluoride and this is going to prevent tooth decay in the children so for that purpose we are adding fluoride in the water now one thing you have to remember is this fluoridation or adding fluoride in the water is not practiced in india but it is a very very popular uh, water uh, treatment fluoridation in especially europe and in the united states so whatever we are discussing in fluoridation is more related with america only so they have given five reasons why fluoridation in the water is good for the community now first thing of course it prevents uh, tooth decay in uh, childhood this because this is a very common uh, childhood uh, disease so uh, they have said that it is the 10 it is um, uh, center of for disease control and prevention has named it one of the 10 great public health achievements of the 20th century it protects all ages and against cavities so even elder people also later in the later stage they also will develop tooth uh, cavities so it prevents uh, for adults also prevents against cavities and it is a very uh, safe and effective adding fluoride in the water and uh, the health benefits of water fluoridation for preventing tooth decay is recognized and endorsed by numerous united states surgeons it saves a uh, lot of money uh, because we are spending less on dentist right dental filling will you, especially in the united states the dentist uh, dentistry is a very uh, popular uh, profession because it is very expensive also so the average uh, lifetime cost per person to fluoridate a water supply is less than the cost of one dental filling so dental filling is very expensive so you can save that if you don't have any dental problem and it is a natural fluoride is naturally present in the ground water and the oceans water fluoridation is the adjustment of fluoride to a recommended level for preventing the tooth decay so what for fluoridation is done is nothing but for prevention of tooth decay and how much amount of fluoride you are adding 0.7 to 1 mg per liter only now you can understand here we are using iodized salt in india that is fortifying iodine uh, sorry fortifying salt with iodine it is fluoridation is also similar to that so here it says it is similar to fortifying other foods and beverages like fortifying salt with iodine milk with vitamin d orange juice with calcium and bread with folic acid so of course in india we are not doing all this but at least we are fortifying salt with iodine just to eliminate the iodine deficiency so this is one thing we do in india other things of course you will not find here these are all things found in the united states similar to this they are also fortifying the water with fluoride just for preventing the decay of the teeth so this figure again explains all the same five factors so fluoride helps because when teeth are growing it mixes with the tooth enamel that hard coating on your teeth and that prevents tooth decay or cavities and fluoride can help even after the teeth are formed it works with the saliva to protect the tooth enamel so water fluoridation is the controlled adjustment of fluoride to a public water supply to reduce tooth decay and fluoridated water contains fluoride at a level that is effective for preventing cavities this can occur naturally 
or if not you have to add fluoride in a artificial way